Hi guys, this is Karen Sassine from Rainbow Mosaics and Mosaic Mentoring. And I'm going to show you um, a little bit about what I'm working on and how I do some of the things I do. So I've never been formally trained in working with the sheet glass method. So um, in fact, I've never taken any classes on it um, or even watched any videos. So this is my own method. I have no clue whether it, other people do that this way or not, but um, I just wanted to show you. So first of all, I've got my um, substrate, which is a piece of Laticrete Hydroband board, which I love. It's got a nice um, surface on it. And I'm gonna be working on this piece right here. So I've chosen a piece of glass. Now the interesting thing about this glass is I couldn't find the right color glass for the dog. I couldn't find this orangey color. So what I did was I took this glass that I did find and I painted the back of it with golden acrylic burnt sienna. And it actually works really well. Um, what it did, take a look, it turned this color glass into that color glass. So it really gave it a nice, or rich, warm orange color, which is the color of the dog. <clears throat> but I used the, the non-painted for the highlights. I thought that would make great highlights. So I'm working on this piece right here, and it's almost like working a stained glass piece without a pattern, because I'm choosing to do larger pieces and uh, fitting them together almost like a puzzle. So this piece is the piece that I chose to create this piece out of. And I do a lot of eyeballing. Another thing I do is I use my Sharpie China marker and I have another little tool by my side which is a piece of sandpaper. And what I use the sandpaper for is I take the China marker and I create a point because anybody that uses China markers knows that they're really, they have a real wide tip. But I want a nice, point so I can have a, a nice sharp edge and really be able to use this the right way for me. So I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to lay it over and I'm going to leave, you know, about half an inch or so and I'm basically going to eyeball it and I'm going to draw the shape that I'm going to want to cut out. And if, I'm a, if it's a complicated cut, I make it just a little bit bigger than, not by much though, but a little bit, just to make sure that I don't cut too much off. So this piece, let's see, once this is here, so this is gonna be kind of a nice arc in. So there's my piece, and now what I'm gonna do Depending on the piece, sometimes I've actually used my Toyo um, hand cutter, but most of the time I use my Laponets, my, my wheeled nippers. So I'm gonna start by cutting it the right length. And I know that this piece right here really isn't gonna need to be ground down at all because it fits that shape right there perfectly. So I'm gonna line it up. And I'm going to eyeball, and I made it a little bit too long, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it down now. And now I'm going to start working on this edge right here. So I line it up, I see, I visualize where that edge is, and I start cutting. And I'm going to hold it up. Normally I cut down so the pieces fly other area ways. Right now they're flying all up in the air. So I'm just going to cut that line. Now, it cut that off just a teeny bit right there, but honestly, I don't think that's gonna be a problem because I still think I'm um, bigger than I need to be for this, and I am. This is still a little bit too long. So I just start working my way around and eyeballing. And it's really just a bunch of nibbling. Um, I use a grinder for this piece. 
almost every single one of these pieces have been ground. So um, that's why I'm not too, too concerned about making it perfect. Now, if you didn't have a grinder, you just have to be really careful with your nibbling and do the best you can. Um, you can also use a little hand file. Um, a lot of people use that. You can even, the sandpaper doesn't quite work, but um, you know, it ends up eating off the sandpaper and it, you really just don't get much of a smooth edge. But there are uh, sanding blocks that you can use. So this is a funny curve right here. Really complicated curve. It goes in and then out and then in and then out. So line it up, close one eye, take a look, and I'm gonna start by cutting this one curve. And now for the next curve. Oops, dropped it. So it's constant lining up, looking at it, seeing where I'm off, and then cutting. Each piece could take upwards of 15 to 20 minutes to do. And once I get it to where it starts to fit in there, then it gets a little bit easier even. Get in there. So now this right here. So I really just eyeball and I, I try to visualize where my line is gonna be cut and pick it up and cut it. So I'm looking, I'm moving out of place, I'm looking at that line. Sometimes if it, there's texture to the glass, you can use a spot in it to help visualize where that cut is. Let's make it shorter so it'll fit in there. I am working on an easel, and I do that because it's just much easier on your neck. It's a little tabletop easel, and it's got a lip on the bottom, and I absolutely love it. My daughter gave it to me and I am so grateful. Getting closer. There we go. So now it fits in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up that edge and make it fit perfectly around that curve. And then I'm gonna glue it in and voila, got my last piece on. Now, a couple other things I wanted to show you. Um, these are my tweezers that, gosh, I've had these things forever. Um, what I do is I, I hand forge the back flat so it's a, it acts as a, um, I can, use it to lift things, I can use it. One of the things that I really wanted to show you that I love about it is let's say I put the glue on and it seeps on through. Now, if that dried like that with that extra glue there, then when I put a piece down, it would cause the piece to not be flat. So what I do is I take the back end of my tweezer and I scrape it right along that edge and I scrape it flat. And what that does is allows me to put the next piece down flat. And I do this whether I'm working with thin set, whether I'm working with glue, you never want to have that squish come out because if you let that squish dry, then you can't put a piece after it because it's not going to be the same thickness. So really important to clean off that edge and love my tweezers for that purpose. 
Um, let's see what else. I think that's about it. So I'm going to um, go ahead now and grind this with my grinder and get it the right shape. And then I'm going to glue it in. And I am done with the paws. Next is going to be working on, let's see if it's still in the picture. Let me scoop this over. So over here, I've got the rest of the dog right here and then my background. And that is it. And there's the picture of what I'm working with. Hope y'all enjoyed this. Thank you.